Well, blessed morning to everyone, and it's good for us to be together as God's children in his house uh, be served by him in uh, his gifts of life and salvation, and of course, in one voice, respond in praise and thanksgiving. We are following the Divine Service Setting 1, which begins on page 151 in the front part of your hymnal, but also in just moments, the psalm uh, selected for, chosen for this Sunday, at the last Sunday of the church year, is Psalm, the 95th Psalm. And we will be singing responsively verses 1 through 7, the first part of 7 anyway. If you want to mark that, that's prior to our order of service, if you want to mark that at this time. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed what we have done, and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved you. Jesus, you deserve eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us all, us, and lead us, and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Again, our psalm for this Sunday is the 95th Psalm. We will sing responsively verses 1 through 7, the first half of 7. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. For the Lord is a great God. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The sea is his, for he made it. O come, let us worship and bow down. For he is our God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Continue with the Kyrie on page 152. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God. And for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. 
Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal God, merciful Father, you have appointed your Son as judge of the living and the dead. Enable us to wait for the day of his return with our eyes fixed on the kingdom prepared for your own from the foundation of the world through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Please be seated for our readings. Old Testament reading for the last Sunday of the church here comes from Ezekiel chapter 34. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I, I myself, will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock when he is among his sheep that have been scattered, so will I seek out my sheep, and I will rescue them from all places where they have scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. And I will bring them out from the peoples, and gather them from the countries, and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the ravines, and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them with good pasture, and on the mountain heights of Israel shall be their grazing land. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and on rich pasture they shall feed on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep. And I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord God. I will seek the lost, I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured. And I will strengthen the weak, and the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them in justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, Behold, I, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you push with side and shoulder, and thrust at all the weak with your horns, till you have scattered them abroad, I will rescue my flock. They shall no longer be a prey. I will judge between sheep and sheep, and I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I am the Lord. I have spoken. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive, but each in his own order. Christ, the first fruits, 
Then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father after destroying every rule and every authority and every power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to to be destroyed is death. For God has put all things in subjugation under his feet. But when it says, all things are put in subjugation, it is plain that he is accepted. Who put all things in subjugation under him? When all things are subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to him. Who put all things in subjection under him? That God may be all in all. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for the Holy Gospel. Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Jesus said, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations, and he will separate people from one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will place the sheep on his right, but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right, come, you who are blessed by my father, Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, When did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them. Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these my brothers, you did it to me. And he will say to those on his left, depart from me, you cursed into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. And they also will answer, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger or naked, or sick or in prison, and did not minister to you? And he will answer them, saying, Truly I say to you, as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Having heard the word of the Lord, let's join together and confess the faith. We will use the Nicene Creed. You'll find on page 158. We confess, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, so made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, 
who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated for the hymn of the day. We pray, may the words of my lips and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, there are a couple of verses on the top of the insert which you'll find in the bulletin, which will be the basis of our meditation here together this morning. Let's hear those verses again. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations. And he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates sheep, the sheep from the goats. This is our text. Please be seated. And as well, there's some points of our meditation, which we'll go over the, together this morning, followed by a summary of our readings, which bring all of our readings together 
And uh, it's there for your meditation and prayer this week. And uh, this is the last Sunday of the church here. Brothers and sisters in Christ, may God's grace, his mercy, peace be ours this morning through his son, Jesus. Amen. Yeah, it had to have been a terrible tra- tragedy when Mount Vesuvius uh, erupted in, in 79 A.D., destroying the Roman cities of Pompeii and Herculaneum, burying uh, those cities in just ash and what scientists would have believed a, a lot of poisonous gas, killing the inhabitants of both of those cities. And it's said that in Pompeii, while there were many who were buried in the ruins, just in the very positions and postures in which they were, you know, going about their daily business or trying to escape, others were trying to find, were found on the streets trying to run away, and others in vaults, probably for security reasons. And there is one, one who is discovered there to have stood his post no matter what, and that was a Roman sentinel. And he was found standing at the, at the gate of the city where he had been placed there by his captain. And no matter what had happened in the sky above and on, the, on you know, the, the earth below his feet, he stood there at his post, steadfast, in the very place he had been placed by his captain. And, geez, and there he is found a thousand years later in that same position. And Jesus said, according to St. Matthew, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. You know, Jesus tells us that a day and an hour is coming. No one knows what that day and hour will be. When he will come, the Son of Man will appear in his glory, all the angels with him, and he will be on his glorious throne. All on earth, the living and the dead, will be gathered before him for one reason, to be judged. And until then... We, as God's people, are to remain steadfast. Even if heaven and earth were to give way, we remain steadfast in God and his word and who he has made us to be in holy baptism. And it's solely by what he provides you and me that we are ever able to remain steadfast in God's word and promise and holy baptism. And so this is the last Sunday of the church year. In one week, we, are, we begin a new year in the church, a season of Advent, a season which we observe and we prepare for the coming of the Lord. But today, we meditate upon Jesus' word of truth concerning that last day when he will appear with all his angels sitting on that glorious throne to judge both the living and the dead, as we Christians confess. You know, this... It could happen today. It could happen tomorrow. In the month of March. Five years from now. 5,000 years from now. We don't know. We are not allowed to know. We are simply to trust. And there's no way for us to ever calculate the day and the time. The Lord does not allow us to do that. Yes, as we await... We are called upon our, by our Lord and Savior to remain steadfast in his word. No matter how much we struggle with anything of this world, ourselves, our own sinful flesh. So let's meditate upon what Jesus tells us about that day. The first point in the insert there. When the Son of Man comes, the whole world will be on trial. On trial. So naturally, we want to know... Who is the judge? How will he judge? And who will be judged? So based on our experiences and and the experience of others who have gone through justice systems, that in order to have a fair trial, it's necessary to have a fair-minded, just, upright judge, someone who can live up to the confidence placed in him or her. But Jesus tells us he will come in glory with all of his angels to judge us all now who is this well this judge is the same son of man who around 2,000 years ago came to this earth in poverty and humility and now we look to his coming in glory to judge the entire world this is the same son of man who around 2,000 years ago came alone unaccompanied 
And now we look to him coming with all the angels of heaven. Who is this judge? Well, this is the same son of man who around 2,000 years ago was found in a manger in a small town. Now we look to him arriving upon his throne of glory. So let's meditate upon the seriousness of this great occasion. And in doing so, I want to share with you three words. They were actually shared uh, on Thanksgiving Eve in relation to God's call upon us to give him thanks and praise. But today we, we're going to look on these three words to consider the seriousness of what will take place on that last day on Judgment Day. And so let's go to the second point there in the insert. Behold, Jesus, our judge, our judge is, and there are three words you see there, omniscient, omnipotent, and omnipresent. The prefix for each of these, omni, is Latin for all. There is no limit, no restriction on what God has in these things. Referring to these words as you see them there, the first is omniscient, meaning all-knowing. The second is omnipotent, meaning all-powerful. The third is omnipresent, meaning present everywhere. Yes, Jesus is the judge who will appear that day, but he is no common judge. Even though he is in the nature of man, and he is and always will be, at the same time, he is the Lord of glory, the King of kings. Yes, man, but also God, who is all-knowing, all-powerful, and he's present everywhere. And he knows everything. He is all-wise. He knows the deepest secrets of our hearts. There will be no hiding anything from him, and there isn't today either. He is all-wise, a judge incapable of making mistakes in judgment. He's good, he's right, he's just. With him, there will be no respect to persons. It will not matter whether rich or poor or honored or despised. doesn't matter. Everyone will be judged equally. The way we are used to things on earth is that while a judge is able to sentence someone, he then cannot go ahead and then execute that sentence. He's not in the position or have the power to do that. It's left to others who are designated to carry that out. But yet Jesus, the judge, comes to not only reveal all that is hidden in our hearts, but to also give a sentence and to still to carry out that sentence. There will be no deceptions, no impartiality. Once the sentence is given, it cannot be changed. No appeal to a higher court. And through life, we so often hide from that which makes us uncomfortable. But on that day, there will be nowhere to anyone to escape. No foreign country to run to. No cave to hide in. No cruise ship to take off on and disappear. This judge will know everything. Nothing will escape his discernment. He has both authority to sentence and the power to carry out that sentence, and there will be nowhere to run off to. And so the first thing he will do, he will separate people from one from another as shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And there is the verdict. No one will have anything to say of the verdict he, will, he or she will receive. And how the judge separates us also tells the sentence he will impose on each. The sheep on his right, he calls them blessed, declares them heirs of the kingdom of heaven, invites them to come in with the full enjoyment of heaven. But to those on his left, goats, he calls them cursed, tells them to depart into eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. This is a lot of realities coming right from the mouth of our Lord. Friends, we want to know what will be my verdict that day, as we're all asking. And this leads us to the best news ever, the third point there. Three, behold Jesus our Savior. The same Son of Man who is to come to all of this to carry all of this out, is the same Son of Man who came here, first of all, 
to pay for the price of our sin. His resurrection was God's seal of approval of that sacrifice and for that very purpose. And this same Son of Man instituted his very means of, to deliver to you and to me all of the fruit of his suffering and death, beginning with the forgiveness of our sins. All that God offers you on account of Jesus' of suffering and death, he offers to you and me now in the means of grace. Before that day, his word, his sacraments. The first thing under the third point there, behold God's word of promise and holy baptism and see that you are ready and prepared. It's promised that for the sake of his son, God washes you clean of your sin in the water of holy baptism. He's placed his name upon you as his own child. And Jesus, as the judge, all-knowing, all-wise, cannot, will not miss this mark of God's name upon you. It is the greatest comfort that we can take that on the day, on that day, that final day, Jesus cannot, will not overlook or make a mistake or be careless with what your baptism gives you and provides you. Even a child who has been baptized can lean upon this very word of the Lord, word of promise and holy baptism, and grow in that gift of wisdom and who he is before God in Jesus Christ, and assured his identity, his wholeness in Christ, knowing exactly what to do with his or her sin on a daily basis, and that is to confess it before God, in the confidence that God's promise is he will forgive his sins. Not only will your baptism not be overlooked or missed by the judge on that day, but every day until, until then, your baptism keeps you as one redeemed, ready and prepared for that day every time you turn to God in repentance of your sins and, and receive his forgiveness. The next there, behold the cross of Jesus in God's means of grace and see that you are sustained. This is his promise to you. Your sin, my sin, until that great final day is going to continue on a daily basis. And it cannot be left undealt with. And it must be dealt with the way God provides for the way to be dealt with. And that is for that sin to be crushed. And for us to be lifted in the forgiveness of sins for the sake of Christ. So behold God's gift of absolution of the forgiveness of your sins. The very words as if Christ is speaking them to you that you can point your conscience to. And the devil saying... The Lord has forgiven me my sins. I have this very word from him. And knowing that the same omniscient, omnipotent judge who will appear on that day, that last day, he now, he meets you in his church, in his means of grace, using his almighty knowledge and wisdom and power to deal with your daily sin now, that you may live in that comfort and that peace every day in the joy of, of that final day when he comes to judge. Yes, to joyfully anticipate that day. Assured that, that he will not see your sin, but rather who you are to him in holy baptism. So, brothers and sisters in Christ, be certain. Sin and guilt not dealt with the Lord's way, left to fester, is what drives us away, what pulls us away from this very Lord and Savior you and I must meet on that last day. But through his very means of grace, he keeps you with him now, comforting, to, comforting you with the certainty that you will know him then, whenever it will be. You know, as that Roman sentinel remains steadfast at his post, so does God's word of promise place you where you need to be in God's eyes. And his very means of grace keep you steadfast in that post until that great and final day. And so not only will the omniscient, omnipotent, and omnipresent judge deliver his verdicts, he will also confirm them. And those on his right, those with faith in the Savior, will be told that they did great and wonderful deeds during their life on earth and faith and 
Well, they are going to be surprised at this because the very good deeds that they did were simply in response to his great love and his service to them. Their great deeds went unnoticed to themselves simply because it was not for their self-glorification or for winning favor with God. And Jesus will say to them, Truly I say to you, as you did to the one of the least of me, my brothers, you did it to me. But however, those on his left will be told of his great displeasure, of how they did not love him and serve him. They will try to reason with him. It will be to no avail. He is, after all, the judge, the right and just judge who cannot make a mistake in his judgment. And this is where we need to listen carefully to God's word. Our relationship with the Savior and judge Jesus Christ is not based upon our good works, not in the slightest amount, but based completely upon his gift of faith each of us has received in holy baptism. Now, Jesus brings up good works because he delights to see them as the fruit of that gift of faith that he's provided us. And we cannot offer any good deeds to our Lord to win or to buy or to secure his favor. Not in the slightest bit. And in fact, he rejects such works as evil deeds used to circumvent his means of grace. I really appreciate the warning Martin Luther raises about ever using our good works to soften or push God's anger away. He says, to oppose God's wrath with our good works is like attempting to extinguish a fire by throwing straw upon it. It doesn't work. It makes it worse. In other words, offering our good works to God to appease him in his wrath or to contribute to our relationship with him that he promises to establish and preserve on his own terms infuriates his wrath even more. He delights in the good works his own carry out as a fruit of the gift of faith that he purchased and won for them. Not that they add anything to their salvation or relationship with him, but simply that, well, he just enjoys them. So I appreciate what another pastor put said about this. He said, if our motive in the good works we do is to make God's glory more visible and to magnify his praise, we shall not be seeking to be ourselves admired. When the harp string and swift vibration gives out its beautiful tone, itself is unseen. While it is faith in the Savior that places you at the right hand of the judge that final day and that faith alone, the good works that flow from that faith are music to the judge's ears. And they are omniscient ears they don't miss a thing of that music. And yes, that great and final day is a very serious event coming, a day and a time we do not know. But yet we also know and we can be sure that the all-knowing, all-powerful, all-present judge that day will, will not be able to miss the name of God placed upon you in your baptism. And because of his promise to you, he will call you by name and take you to his right side, welcoming you to his Father's kingdom to enjoy the riches and your inheritance as a child of God. But until then, behold the very means of God's grace used to keep you ready and prepared for that day, his gifts of word and sacraments. And that takes us to the very last point there. Take comfort and rejoice. Your judge is also your Savior. So thank you, Lord Jesus, for all that you have done to make us and keep us ready and prepared. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all of our understanding, keep and guard our hearts and minds, in and through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. You'll find our offertory on page 159. Would you please rise?
Please be seated for the gathering of our offerings to the Lord. Please rise for prayer. Each of our petitions conclude with Lord in your mercy, congregation's responses, hear our prayer. Lord God, you gather your people from all nations and bring them into your one holy Christian and apostolic flock. Strengthen them by your grace that they may gladly feast upon your riches and your means of grace and declare your praises to all who will hear. Lord in your mercy. Almighty God, you judge between your sheep and you shepherd your people with your holy word. Encourage your pastors and all servants in your church that through their faithful service to you, continue to seek the lost, bring back the strayed, bind up the injured, and strengthen the weak. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, you have subjected all things unto your Son who gladly subjects himself to you. Bless the homes of your people, that parents may train and catechize their children with wisdom and love, and that children may gladly submit and honor their father and mother. Grant cheer and happiness to those who celebrate this week, birthdays, baptismal birthdays and anniversaries, and other wonderful times of life. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of hosts, you sustain every rule and authority and power as you see fit until this world's powers should pass away. But we ask until then, bless all in civil authority that they would not provoke your wrath, but maintain order and justice for the peace of your people. Lord, in your mercy. And Father in heaven, we look forward to a new heaven and a new earth, the home of righteousness while now we contend with a multitude of afflictions under the curse of sin. We ask that you remember those who need or in need of help and of healing and assurance of your mercy. All those we lift up to you and name in our hearts. All those who grieve and suffer in any way. Preserve them, deliver them from, from their transgressions and hold, withhold not your peace at their tears. But provide them that peace and the assurance of your mercy. Lord, in your mercy. In God of life, Christ has been raised from the dead, the firstfruits of those who have fallen asleep. We give you thanks to you, to you for those you have gathered into your kingdom and who are asleep in, in him. Strengthen our conviction that death is defeated as we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, you have prepared your kingdom for us from the foundation of the world. Preserve us in faith and love throughout our days that we may care for your servants and our neighbors with compassion and joy, looking toward that day when the Son of Man comes in his glory. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, 
now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trust in his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Receive the benediction of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Please be seated for just a couple of announcements. One, uh, any visitors or guests with us here this morning that um, would like to take that opportunity, uh, no pressure, but the opportunity to introduce yourself or a guest that you have with you while we're together here. Well, always welcome here at Bethel. And, uh, well, this is the last Sunday of the church here, which means the season of Advent as we roll around. So keep your eye on the calendar, the church calendar and schedule, uh, midweek Advent services, and a lot of things coming up in December. It's a wonderful time of year as we roll around to this new church here. And uh, so Lord's blessings, Bible study, Sunday school in just a few moments. And go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Mm-hmm.